Hey everyone, I am Paul Tillery, animator and author of Thundercluck. If you found this through the Thundercluck Tumblr, you've probably seen the Tutor Tuesday art tutorials by my co-illustrator Meg Whitwer. Uh, she has been super busy with her job on Archer, so to keep tutorials coming on the blog, I'm starting a video series about working in OpenTunes. OpenTunes is a powerful program that has its roots in Studio Ghibli, and it's open source, which means it's free for anyone to use. If you'd like to read more, check out this article linked below. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, in 2014, I made a short film called Thundercluck, Chicken of Thor, and I was hired as a professor of animation at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, since then, I got a book deal for Thundercluck, and I went on hiatus from teaching in 2018 with the book coming out that fall. Uh, I started learning open tunes for the book trailer, and I should note I also used Adobe programs for some stylization and compositing, but I used open tunes for character animation. The program definitely takes some getting used to, but once you do, it's really rewarding. <clears throat> when I started using open tunes, I found it pretty overwhelming. Uh, so I want to teach it in a way that is easy to digest and goal oriented. These first few sections will build up toward animating and exporting a simple GIF, like this. If you're totally new to OpenTunes, I recommend watching the full collection in order. But if you've dabbled a little bit, if you're just trying to fill in some knowledge gaps, I've also made each video available individually. Now, we're going to take it from the start with how to install the program and where the installation puts the files. So that's coming up next. To start with, you'll want to download the appropriate version of OpenTunes from github.io. There's a direct link in this video's description, or you can just Google OpenTunes and it should be the top result. On the main page, uh, click the download link and then the green button, and then you can choose to download for Windows or Mac. Uh, one thing to note, since the program is open source, there are some custom modified versions available. But to try to keep everything standardized, I'll be demoing with the official release from GitHub. When you launch the installer, depending on your security settings, you might need to give permission to actually install the program. For example, my Mac initially rejected the installation, so I had to go into my security settings to allow it. The general consensus is that it's safe, but feel free to scan the installer with antivirus software if you want to be extra sure. <clears throat> running the installer. Uh, most of the default settings are fine, though I do prefer not to make a desktop shortcut, so I'm going to uncheck that. Once you've installed, you have the option to launch the program right away, but first it's a good idea to get familiar with where to find the related files on your hard drive. So for now, let's uncheck this box and find those files. On Windows, on the C drive, you should see a folder called OpenTune Stuff, and that's where you'll be saving projects and work. I recommend adding this to the File Explorer's quick access list. The application itself is in the program files within a subfolder for OpenTunes. There is a lot in here, so look for the application with its green icon and go ahead and pin this to the taskbar. On Mac, the application is in the Applications folder, imagine that. Right next to it should be an OpenTunes subfolder, and this contains the OpenTunes stuff folder where your work will be saved. Again, I recommend adding these to Quick Access and the dock. <clears throat> Once you've got it installed, uh, double-click the program to start it up, and in the next section we'll take a look at the launch menu. Before you start animating, the startup menu is what you'll see when you first launch the program. If you just want to draw for fun, you can enter a scene name like Test and click Create Scene and skip ahead to the next section. But if your eventual goal is to make real projects, it's good to know what we're looking at here. <clears throat> All right, the startup menu can look like a lot at first, so let's break it into three sections. Choose Project determines where files will be saved. Create a new scene has settings for the actual file we'll be working in and Open Scene will give easy access to recently saved work once we actually have some. Looking at Choose Project, it's currently set to Sandbox, so let's see what that means. If we go back to our OpenTunes stuff folder, there's a subfolder called Sandbox, and this is where our work today will be saved. Once we get to something more serious, we can put it in the Projects folder, but for today's test, Sandbox is fine. Under Create a New Scene, the three main items to look at are scene name, resolution, and frame rate. If you're curious about the rest, you can check the video description for more details. Uh, the scene name is what our file will be called, and we'll enter that in just a bit. Resolution will be the pixel dimensions for our scene, and 1920 by 1080 is fine. 
Finally, frame rate should be 24 frames per second. That's film standard, and it's what will work in for the demos. Once you've got all that confirmed, enter the scene name as test v1 and click create scene to get started. So all of that was just a long-winded way of saying right now you don't need to change anything. But in the future you might, and now you know what it all means. So next up, let's talk about the interface. This is an introduction to the OpenTunes interface. There is a lot that we could cover on this, and today's material will just be the tip of the iceberg, really all that we need to get started. <clears throat> First, note in the upper right there are some tabs called Rooms, and by default we're in one called Basics. Rooms are collections of panels that can be used for different purposes, and we'll explore some of these rooms later, but for today, basics is all we need. Uh, the interface is customizable, which is kind of a double-edged sword. In a future video, we will make a custom interface, but for right now, I want to stick with the defaults, and I want to make sure we're all seeing the same thing. So, I recommend clicking Windows, Lock Room Panes, to prevent moving things around by accident. Uh, within basics, there is a lot of stuff, and we're just going to focus on five areas today. Those are the viewer, the toolbar, the level strip, the X sheet, and the level palette. The other panels, we'll talk about some in future videos, but for right now, don't even worry about them. A little more detail about our five main panels going from left to right. In the toolbar, we've got a number of tools, and we'll talk about some in the next section when we start drawing. Uh, the viewer is where you will see and work on the imagery of your animation. A level strip and the X sheet, in OpenTunes, a level is a collection of drawings that go together, and the X sheet is where you arrange the order and timing of how those drawings will show up in your animation. So in the interface, the level strip is where you'll see drawings listed out for the current level, currently blank because we haven't made a level yet, and the X sheet is where we'll arrange the timing for those drawings. Finally, the level palette is where we'll see the colors available for our current level. Again, since we haven't yet made a level, right now it's blank. <clears throat> Again, for now, I recommend against customizing. Uh, the tutorials will be easiest to follow if we're seeing the same thing. If you accidentally change the interface and can't figure out how to change it back, you can click Windows Reset to Default Rooms. Uh, be aware, this won't have an effect right away, but if you close the program and reopen, it should be back to default. Uh, if you've been working, be sure to save your work before doing so. So, that is the interface. Now that we're a little more familiar with that, next up, let's introduce some drawing tools. All right, four sections in, we'll finally start with the drawing tools, and for that, we'll need to make a new level. <clears throat> So, to make a new level, I'm going to click File, New Level, and that brings up the New Level panel. Uh, most of the default settings here should be fine, but one thing we'll want to enter manually is a name for our level. Uh, if OpenTunes names levels automatically, they just go A, B, C, D, and it becomes hard to tell what's what. So, I'm going to call this level first GIF Drawings. Uh, the other settings should all be fine, but make sure that type is set to Tunes Vector. In the future, we might talk about some of the other options here, but for right now, Tunes Vector Level is what we want. So with all that confirmed, click OK to make the level. And when you do, note a few things have appeared. Uh, down in the Level palette, we now have black and white swatches, and that black is what our brush tool will draw with automatically. Over in the level strip, note we've got a new thumbnail for the first drawing in our level, currently blank. And over in the X sheet, this block means that our first drawing has automatically been placed in our animation. These numbers in the X sheet indicate frame numbers for our animation, so this block means that our first drawing has automatically been placed on frame 1. Alright, I'm going to demo some tools. The hotkeys are listed here, and I'll announce them as I use them. Alright, first, for navigating around in the viewer, if you press and hold space, you can use the hand tool to drag your canvas around. When we're zoomed in this close, it's kind of hard to see that happening, so to zoom out, you can press and hold shift plus space, and then click and drag down to zoom out, or up to zoom in. When we're pulled back like this, this white rectangle is going to be the canvas that we're working in, and note it has a little animation desk design around it, so that's cute. Once we've got our canvas in view like this, let's do a quick test drawing. So I'm going to tap B to switch to my brush tool, 
and then I'll do a line, a line, a line, and a happy face. All right, before we go any further, let's take a look at the brush tool settings up at the top of the screen. Size, min, and max will determine the thickness of our brush strokes. If you've got pressure sensitivity, your brush stroke will range from the minimum value to the max. If you don't have pressure sensitivity, it'll just be that maximum thickness. Uh, you can change these values by clicking and dragging on the sliders here, or by clicking on the fields and entering numbers that way. So here's an example with a thicker stroke there. For today's exercise, I'm just going to go back to that default 1 to 5 range. Then accuracy here, uh, we will talk about this more in a future video about vector brush strokes. For right now, just know that leaving it at 20 should be fine. Finally, smooth over here. When drawing digitally, it is natural for there to be a little bit of a wobble that you might not want. If you increase this smooth value, that can help get rid of that with new brush strokes that you're drawing. But be wary of setting this value too high. If you go too high with it, it starts working against you with open tunes, overcorrecting lines that you might want to come out curvier. If you're ever trying to draw and you feel like open tunes is changing your lines too much, check on this smooth value and see if reducing it helps. I like to set it at about five when I'm working. All right, once we've got some brush strokes in place, let's talk about how to select them. I'm going to tap S to switch over to my select tool, and then I can click on brush strokes to select them individually. I can press and hold shift to add more strokes to my selection, or I can click and drag to do a marquee selection. With that marquee, it is rectangular by default, but if you click on this drop down menu in the upper left, you can change that to freehand, which I prefer. That lets you draw the shape of your own marquee. Once you've got brush strokes selected, you can click and drag on the strokes themselves to move them around. You can click and drag on these control points to scale, or you can click and drag just outside of the corners to rotate. A couple things to note, if you've worked in Toon Boom, it might be in your muscle memory that a marquee only has to overlap with a stroke to select it. That's not the case in Open Tunes. In Open Tunes, your marquee needs to go all the way around a stroke to get it selected. Uh, honestly, there are pros and cons for either approach there. A bigger issue is that if you've got a selection and then you use either the hand tool or the zoom tool to navigate, uh, note that makes you lose your selection and hitting control Z to undo doesn't get your selection back. It just undoes whatever transformation you last applied. So that's not ideal. There are some posts on GitHub with users asking the developers to change this. In the meantime, it's definitely something to be aware of. So this has been fun, but it's not what I want to animate. So let's talk about how to delete selections. Uh, the hotkeys for deleting are a little particular. On Windows, to delete a selection in OpenTunes, you have to use the delete key. Be aware that the backspace key doesn't do the trick, so be sure to use delete. On Mac, if you're on a laptop, it gets a little trickier. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be the backspace key, not delete, that deletes things in OpenTunes. And my Mac doesn't have a backspace key. Uh, what does work for me is to hold the function key and then press delete. If you're in the same boat, you can remember this as fn delete. Uh, so, since I am demoing in Windows here, to wipe out these brush strokes, I'm going to select them all. Remember, backspace doesn't work, so I'm going to hit delete to wipe them out. Now we're back to a blank canvas to animate on for real. <clears throat> One final word of warning. Uh, if you click on the thumbnail for your drawing in your level strip, that will isolate just the drawing without the canvas. And if your drawing is blank, that means you end up in this gray void where you can't really tell where you are. To get your canvas back, you'll want to click on the cell in the X sheet that contains a drawing. And now we're back to our canvas. So keep that in mind. If you end up in this gray void, click on the cell in the X sheet. <clears throat> One tool I did not demo is the eraser. Uh, if you've used other digital art software, you might find the eraser in OpenTunes a little bit odd. Uh, in a future video, I'll talk about how vector strokes work, why the eraser is the way it is, and what other options you have for refining line work. But for right now, I recommend just not using the eraser. Uh, since we're just experimenting, don't worry too much about making your lines perfect. 
So now we're familiar with some drawing tools and we're back to a blank canvas. Next up, we'll actually draw a character and add some frames. All right, once we've practiced those drawing tools, this is where it really gets fun. Time to draw a character. So let's get drawing now. Uh, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space to draw by clicking and dragging on this dark line between the viewer and the level palette. If I drag that down, I can make my viewer a little bit larger and uh, I got a bit more space to draw. Uh, I'm going to draw a cartoon chicken naturally. So I'll hit B for the brush tool and I'm going to start with a simple egg-like shape. So we'll do that. Uh, then I'm going to give the chicken a little beak. It'll be like a little sideways D shape here. And then let's do some kind of Kirby-like line eyes here. And uh, let's give the chicken a comb now. So up top, we'll do a little of this. And there we go. It's beautiful. There is our first drawing. To make another drawing so we can actually animate between two different poses or expressions here, over in the X sheet, note we've got a little X underneath our first frame here with the first drawing from our level. If we click on that X, we can navigate to frame two of the animation currently blank. And if we draw on that, we'll do that egg shape again. Notice we've got a new frame here in the animation. We've got a new drawing here in the level. Uh, so the animation begins now. For this one, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. I will uh, do the beak again. This time for the eyes, I'm going to go half hooded and looking over in this direction. And then we've got to have that comb again. All right, if we want to compare how these two frames fit together, we can either click between them in the X sheet. So first frame, second frame, first frame, second frame, or we can use the less than, greater than uh, keys on the keyboard, technically comma or period. Ah, what fun. Okay, we've got our pose one and our pose two. Let's add an in-between here. So I'm going to want to move what's currently on frame two down to frame three in the animation, and then I'll do a new drawing on frame two. Uh, note, if you just click and drag on this block for frame two, it's not actually gonna move the thing like we want it to. We'll need to click on this slightly lightened tab over on the left side of that cells block. If we click and drag on that, we should get a highlight around the block, and then we can pop it down to the next frame. Uh, be aware, sometimes that can be a little bit finicky. Even if it seems like your cursor is right up on that thing, you might not get that highlight around the block. Uh, that won't move it. You need to see the highlight around the frame you've got selected in order to move it to a different frame. Okay, once we've done that, we've got an X here uh, between the two frames, so we can do one more drawing as an in-between position. What I'm gonna do here is squash the character down a little bit and have the eyes squint as kind of a transition from one pose to the next. So we'll do that same egg shape, but a little bit more flat. Uh, that came out kind of wonky, so I'm gonna do Control Z to undo. Yeah, that's better. And uh, again, we'll do the beak. And again, we'll do the comb. Uh, this time for the eyes, we'll do a little bit squinty. Uh, adorable. All right, so we got pose one, pose two, pose three. Boop, 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 boop. All right, toggling through them here. I'm mostly happy with how they're flowing together, but this in-between seems a little bit off-center. So I'm gonna hit S to go back to my select tool. I'll do my marquee selection around the entire character, and then I'm going to shift them over to the side a little bit. Okay, not perfect, but it is fun. And for today, perfection is not the goal. One thing though that I am gonna change, I'm seeing up at the top, the comb is getting pretty close to the top border and I'd rather not have that near tangent. So I'm going to take all of my frames and move them down. I'll select this one and then click that down. Then on to the next frame, select that and down you go. And then finally the last frame, select and down. Okay, final word of warning, and I'm gonna do something wrong here, so just watch, don't follow along. Remember earlier when I made a new frame, I made sure to click on this X and draw within that. Uh, that created a new drawing in our current level, which is what we want. We want all of those drawings organized together. You can click on any of these cells and start drawing, but watch the level strip when I do this, if I start drawing here, it's not in the same level as the other drawings we were doing. Uh, so here, 
are our chicken frames all together. Here, if I made a new frame not working in that X, OpenTunes automatically made a new level. Uh, basically, if this happens, things can get messy. It's best to keep your drawings organized together. So for right now, anytime you want to make a new frame, be sure that you are drawing from one of these X's underneath an existing frame. Uh, we'll talk about more options to avoid this problem in a future video. <clears throat> Before we start on timing, uh, one thing to note about the order of our drawings here. If you look closely at these thumbnails, uh, you might note that the order in our level strip is not the same as the order in our X sheet and thus in our animation. Uh, that actually doesn't matter. The drawings showed up in the level strip in the order that we drew them, but their order in the animation is completely determined by their placement in the X sheet. If you want the order in the level strip to match the order in the X sheet, you have the option of selecting the three frames here, then right clicking and saying auto renumber. And note that will make a little pop over here and that in between becomes drawing number two. Again, doesn't have any effect on your final animation, but if you want this order to match this order, that's an option. <clears throat> Okay, now we've got a few frames drawn and we can manually scrub through them. Uh, next up, we'll talk about how to preview playback and how to adjust timing in the X sheet. So we've got our frames drawn and it's time to see how they look animated. As I said in the previous section, we can manually preview this sequence of drawings by hitting the less than greater than keys. Uh, so we can go forward, forward, back, back. That is what our drawings look like played in sequence, but that doesn't give us an accurate sense of their timing in the actual animation that we would export here. To see how these would look playing back at real time, we'll either want to click this button with arrows going in a cycle, or hit L on the keyboard, as in loop. So I'm going to hit L and... Uh-oh. So that is way too fast. I'm going to hit L again to stop playback here. And the issue is right now, each of our drawings is only on screen for one frame. And since our animation is playing at 24 frames per second, that means that all three of these drawings together are only adding up to one eighth of a second in the animation. And that's just looping over and over again. So for a little more clarity, I'm going to extend each drawing so that it's on screen for more than just a single frame. To do that, I'm going to click on the cell for my first drawing here notice that a little tab becomes visible at the bottom of the cell. And if I click and drag on that tab, I can extend the number of frames for which this drawing is on screen. Uh, note here's the name of the drawing and there's a little line underneath it to indicate how many frames it's being extended across. So I just dragged that tab to make my first drawing on screen for six frames instead of one. I'll do the same thing for my second drawing here. I'm gonna select its cell and then click and drag on its tab to extend it on screen for six frames. And then I'll do the same thing for my third drawing here. Uh, so once I've made that change to the timing, I'm gonna hit L to preview playback again. All right, and that's getting more clear than what we had before. Uh, I'll hit L to stop it again. One thing that I'm noticing when I was previewing earlier using the less than greater than keys, I can still do that to hop from one drawing to another. I like to preview going from eyes open to blink to open to blink, and then we start over again. So open, blink, open, blink, open, blink, open, blink. With the current arrangement in the X sheet, we've got open, blink, open, and then the loop starts again and we're missing that second blink. So to get that second blink, I'm gonna take these cells for the blink drawing in the X sheet. So I'll click on frame seven cell, hold shift and click on frame 12 cell. That selects those cells with this drawing. And then I'm going to hit control C to copy and then click here at frame 19 and hit control V to paste. So now that I've repeated that blink drawing, if I hit L to preview the loop again, now I'm happier with that sense of open blink, open blink, open blink, open blink. Okay, final note for a little bit more visual interest. Right now, each drawing is on screen for the same amount of time. So this drawing is on for six frames, this drawing for six frames, this drawing for six frames, this for six frames. Uh, the visual interest will be a bit stronger if I hold the eyes open positions a bit longer and then make the blink positions a bit quicker. So to achieve that, instead of six frames, six frames, six frames, six frames, 
I'm going to try 8 frames open, 4 frames closed, 8 frames open, 4 frames closed. To achieve that, I'm going to take the first two <coughs> cells of my blink drawing here. So I'll click on this cell at frame 7, then press and hold shift, and click on the cell at frame 8, and then I'm going to hit delete to clear those cells out. Now I want to extend this drawing to fill in those two empty cells. Uh, earlier, I was able to extend drawings by clicking and dragging on this tab. We can still do that, but it's not going to get the result that we want, because when I do that, it's going to maintain that gap and push the other cells forward. Uh, since that's not what we want, we'll need to do something else to fill in these blank cells. To achieve that, I'm going to click on this blank cell, right-click, and then choose Fill in Empty Cells, and that will extend the previous drawing to fill in that gap. Then I'll do the same thing at the end here for the second repetition of our blink drawing. I'm going to select these first two cells, hit delete to clear them out, select the end of the empty cells here, right click and say fill in empty cells. And now we've got eyes open for eight frames, blink for four, eyes open for eight frames, blink for four. If I hit L to preview that playback, now I'm a little bit happier with that timing. We could definitely go further with more in-between drawings and more finesse, but for a simple introductory test animation, I'm satisfied with this. All right, we've accomplished so much. Let's be sure to save our work. We'll talk about that next. All right, this part's going to be pretty brief. Uh, saving is pretty basic, but I do want to note which command to use and where it saves your files. Okay. Before I save this masterpiece, let's take one more look at that OpenTune stuff folder. So I'm going to go back to the C drive, OpenTune stuff, and then we're working in the sandbox folder. Within that sandbox folder, let's take a look in scenes and then drawings and notice that they're both currently empty except for an XML file. Uh, so now let's save. We've got a couple options here. If we click on File, notice there is Save All, Save Scene, and Save Levels. What we'll want to do is click Save All. That's going to cover all bases. So if we click Save All, now if we go back in our Drawings folder, note we've got something new here. It's a PLI file, and then in our Scenes, we've got a TNZ file. So the TNZ file is the format for OpenTune scenes, and the PLI file within our drawings folder is the information for this level that we have made. You want to make sure that you're saving all of that. So again, you'll want to use the save all function here. In a future video on project management, we'll talk about the save scene and save scene as, but for right now, just use that save all. All right. Now we've got our file saved, so if the program closes, we can get it right back. Uh, next up, we'll talk about how to export the animation in a format that we can share. Now we're going to talk about how to export a GIF, and we'll have to jump through some hoops to make that possible. As a heads up, we've had our creative fun, and this part's going to be a little more technical. So consider this like the final boss for these introductory tutorials. To see where we want the export option to appear, click on File, Output Settings. It's about three quarters of the way down the list. That opens up this panel, and what we'll want to focus on is under File Settings, this drop down menu chooses what kind of file format you're going to export your animation as. Most of these formats are image sequences, which are great for bigger projects, not so great for sharing your work online, and note that GIF is not currently available. So we're going to close this down. <clears throat> to get a hint at what's limiting our options, I'm going to click File, and then I'll just try clicking Fast Render to MP4 here, and that's going to give us an error message. It says FFmpeg not found. Uh, OpenTunes needs a piece of software called FFmpeg in order to expand its export options, and that'll include the option to export as GIF. FFmpeg is an open source tool for file encoding. It doesn't come with OpenTunes, but you can download it separately and have them work together. I'm going to do the main demo for this on Windows, and then I'll talk about some differences at the end on Mac. <clears throat> to download FFmpeg, go to ffmpeg.org or just Google FFmpeg, and it should be the top result. Once you're on the site, you'll want to go to the download page, and then be aware this green button up at the top is actually not what we want. That gives you a bunch of folders of code, and we need the actual executable file, which is going to be down under Get the Packages here. 
For Windows, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, hover over the Windows icon and then click Windows Builds, and then click the blue button here for Download Build. Once the download is done, I'm going to minimize the browser, and then let's take a look at what we've got here. These are the contents of our downloaded zip file. Uh, and we're going to need to take this information and move it somewhere that OpenTunes can access it more easily. So I'm going to copy that, and then for ease of access, I'm going to paste it directly into my C drive. Once it's there, for cleanliness, I'm going to remove all these extra characters from the name so the folder is just called FFmpeg. If Windows won't let you do that, be aware there are guides online for granting permissions, and feel free to post questions in the comments. Uh, if you're curious, all that information we just took out of the folder name indicated the version number, and if you'd like to see a record of that, Inside that FFmpeg folder, that version number is still logged in the readme.txt file. Uh, so nothing important lost there. Uh, more importantly, let's take a look inside this bin folder, and in there, that's where we'll find the FFmpeg.exe executable file that OpenTunes needs access to to expand its export options. So now that we know where that's located, let's go back to OpenTunes and tell the program where to find it. To do that, we're going to click File, Preferences, and then we'll need to go to Import, Export, and this FFmpeg path is where we'll tell OpenTunes how to find that file we just specified. To do so, we'll click on this dot 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 button, and remember we saved it in the C drive, so I'm going to click My Computer, C, and then within that I'll choose the FFmpeg folder, within that we'll choose the bin folder we just checked on, and since that's where the executable file is, with that selected, we'll click Choose. All right, now that that is linked, we are almost done. Uh, that's the information that OpenTunes needs to expand its export options, but if we check on our output settings again, we go to File, Output Settings, and check that drop-down menu. Note that GIF, unfortunately, is still not available to us. The thing is, we need to close the program and reopen for these changes to take effect. So, make sure that you've saved, and we'll do save all, like we talked about in the last video. Then close the program, relaunch, reopen that test v1 scene, and when we go to file, output settings, at long last, GIF is available to us in this drop-down menu. Okay, once we select GIF as our output format, let's take a quick look at our other settings here. All the camera settings should be fine. We can minimize that down. Uh, save in outputs means that the GIF we save out is going to go in the output subfolder of our sandbox folder. <clears throat> and then name is what it's going to be called. By default, this goes to our scene name, which we entered as test v1. Uh, for a little bit more clarity, I'm going to call this chicken v1. And everything else should be fine, so let's click render. All right, once it's done, let's find the file. If we go to our OpenTunes stuff folder, remember we are working in the sandbox, and then outputs is where our export goes. So if we look in that, there we've got chickenv1.gif ready for the world to see. On Mac, the process is similar, but with a few key differences. Uh, first, note you've got a couple different download options from ffmpeg.org. Here's what I suggest. If you click Static Builds, it will recommend that you use the download version with the long file name on the left here. I find it simplest to just download this as a DMG file, and when you run that, it'll provide the executable file you need, which you can manually copy to your Applications folder. Then, in OpenTunes on a Mac, the preferences aren't under File, but they're actually under the program name in the menu. You'll still want to click Import Export, and then you can assign the FFmpeg path to your Applications folder. Remember again to save, close, and reopen, and then you can export your GIF. So that's that. In future videos, we'll talk more about cleanup and color, which is fun. Uh, also project management, which is less fun, but still important. So stay tuned. I hope you find these videos helpful, and if so, subscribe for more tutorials, and check out thundercluck.com, especially if you have any young readers or fans of animation in your life. Thanks for watching.